You graduate. What'd you graduate with? So I graduated with my undergrad in political science and my master's in sports psychology. Sports psychology. So you come back home, I'm assuming, to Atlanta, start your life. Yeah, so the plan wasn't to come back. To, <laughs> the plan was to stay in Tennessee, man. I planned to coach. You know, I planned on becoming a football coach and started down the path to do it. And when I made the decision to come back to Atlanta, my wife was still here. And she was teaching in Atlanta. And she had got pregnant with our daughter, Jada. And at the time, I talked to Coach, and I was like, you know, I want to go back and be there for my family because I don't want my kids to have to grow up the way I did in terms of me not being there. And he mm -hmm. was like, hey, go do it. And I planned on working at the rec center in my neighborhood in Kirkwood. And I was going to work there and create leadership curriculums for the kids. Like, speaking was never even on the radar. Like, I never planned to do this. Like, I called the guy that was over at Atlanta Parks and Rec, talked to him. He said, sure, income, I got your job. He's like, I'll give you, he's like, I'm going to give you uh, 20000 a year. I was like, bet, let's do it. And when I moved back, I called him, and he never answered. I emailed, he never responded. And then I went up there to see some people, and they was like, you overqualified. I was like, what's that? Like, I'm just trying to work at the rec center I grew up in. And they was like, we can't do it. And at that point, man, when I moved back to Atlanta, it was a lot of prayer. I was trying to get a job, you know? Like, I wasn't trying to speak. And um, I, gotta I believe go out that. Yeah, I would just go out and volunteer because people would still ask me to come out to talk, you know, about my arm. And I was big on Habitat for Humanity mm -hmm. because a lot of people had helped me. And so I would just go out and try to serve. Whenever I would go somewhere, people would just strike up a dialogue because they would see my arm, one arm smaller than the other. They didn't know if it was a prosthetic. Like people just had a lot of questions. And I would sit there and I would answer them. And people would be like, you need to speak. And I was like, no, nah, I'm cool, man. I ain't trying to speak. Yep. And one day my buddy Gerard Mayo, he's like, Kink, you need to pray about it. And I prayed about it one night and it was simple, man. Like my prayer was, Lord, I don't know what you want me to do. Like I, this was probably the most confusing time in my life because I had went to college, got close to making it to the NFL, got injured, moved back to Atlanta, two blocks I grew up, in my wife's grandmother's home. And I'm like, God, like I know I didn't go all the way to college to come right back, like two blocks away from my spot. And I was like, Lord, I don't know what you want me to do, man, but people are saying speak. And I was like, if it's speak, Lord, like, let's just go. I just want to do something with purpose. And I said, I'll be obedient. And opportunities came. Speaking is not a career that is like be an accountant or be a lawyer. So when people are telling you you should speak, do you even understand at that point that this is an actual career path? Nah. Because I gotta believe as as people tell you you should speak for a living, it's, I I gotta put food on the table. I'm about to have a baby. Like, what do you mean I should speak for a living? Absolutely, and that was my perspective. I didn't know anything about it like that. Like, I'm like, man, I need to get a job. I got a wife and I got a daughter on the way. Like, I, I want to put some food on the table. Like, I grew up struggling. Mm -hmm. My whole family had to go through that. And so speaking at the time, I didn't know anything about it. I'm like, man, now I'm good. Like, I need to get a job. And when the opportunities would come, like, I would go out and share, but I wasn't looking at it in terms of, man, I'm going to be a speaker one day. Like, I, I just wasn't viewing it that way. So you go out, you're doing it here and there. You're just telling your story. Right. People are telling you you should speak. Mm -hmm. You pray on it. Does God answer your prayer in a way, in a, in a way that for you it became clear that this, is my, this should be my path? Yeah, man, it, it did. Um... I got an opportunity to go to Mississippi. I'll never forget it. Like shortly after that prayer, like, and it was like a few days later and it was like a 15 hour round trip uh, driving. And I went and I spoke and I'll never forget. I got the same feeling when I was backstage because now I'm tuned in, right? I prayed, now I'm paying attention. Now I'm looking for a sign. I'm like, I need something, you know what I'm saying? Cause I ain't, 
I ain't got nothing going, right? So I'm trying to see what's what. I'm looking for a sign. And I'm backstage, and I get the same feeling that I used to get in the tunnel before a game. And I go and I speak, and, you know, I get home probably like 2, 3 in the morning, and my wife is waiting up on me. And she's like, how did it go? I was like, it went good. She's like, what you get? I was like, they gave me this cool coffee mug. <laughs> and she's like, you sure? Hey, this is what you're supposed to be doing? I'm like, yeah, I think so. And she was like, let's go for it. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. Like, at that point, Prez, it was just about being obedient, right? I wanted to be obedient because in the Bible it says obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. But as people, the first thing we do is judge the level of sacrifice without being obedient. And so when I said, okay, Lord, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to rock. I'm going to do it. I just wanted to be obedient. And so it didn't matter where the opportunity was. It didn't matter what I was getting for the opportunity. I just wanted to be obedient to what I felt at that time God was calling me to do with my life. At what point in this journey do you say to yourself, I actually have a gift for this. This is ordained. This is my accident. It was purposeful. As much as I wanted that NFL contract, now I'm starting to see there was something greater for me waiting on the other side, even though I couldn't see it in that moment, and I probably fought against it. Absolutely. It, when, when did you realize that, that you had a gift and, and this was your purpose? When, um, when I started seeing people's response. That's why, like, even when you was like, man, like, you don't know what you did for my life. And I was like, man, thank you. And I said to you, now, bro, this confirmation, mm -hmm. that's, that's what it's always been for me because I never planned to do this. And so when I started seeing people coming up to me, whether it was somebody crying, whether it was a father saying, thank you for fighting, man, and handling your situation. I was about to leave my wife and three daughters, right? But because of what happened and you and how you fought, I'm staying in contact and I'm staying tapped in with my wife and my kids. I was like, man, this is a lot deeper than just me and an injury. Right, like God is using this to be a blessing to other people and to impact people's lives. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.